All right, I'm sure you've seen the specs for the R3 by now, and they're crazy, right? As you would expect from a flagship camera by Canon. Uh, but what does it mean for sports photographers? Because a new camera doesn't necessarily mean it's going to help me. It's not going to necessarily make me more money to go and change from one camera to another and spend a couple thousand dollars doing that. I mean, if I did it, it would probably make my job a little bit easier. I don't think it would make it that much easier that I'm going to get it right away, but it does look very impressive and I'd be very eager in trying one out. The downside is that it's going to make it easier for everyone else as well. Because I believe that I could hand the R3 to my mom, spend the afternoon with her, get some great mother-son bonding time, and teach her how I shoot sports, and she'd probably be able to pick it up and get 90% of the images I would get in the same day, sitting in the same place. These cameras are so good that people can do that. You can learn it pretty quick, and as long as you can kind of follow the action, you know a little bit what's going on, you know how to use the buttons, you're going to get some good shots. And even with the mediocre gear, which is another plus for everyone, with the R3s coming out, you probably have a lot of used 1DXs, 1DX Mark IIs, 3s, who knows, at pretty good prices that you wouldn't have had before, and you can get those cameras and upgrade yourself. But what the R3 really means is that that 10% of photos that I would get that my mom wouldn't get is going to separate us. Right, that 10% is what's gonna separate you from other sports photographers. To be honest, the sports photographers that I follow don't post a ton of action. They post some amazing action shots, but they also post the emotion from the game, they set the scene, they show the fans, right? Just very sort of creative angles and different views of the ballpark behind the scenes. I mean, just look at the NBA with, there's so many photos of the guys just walking into the stadium, you know, dressed up. People love seeing the behind the scenes stuff. I'm not saying those are like technically beautiful photos, but you don't need an R3 to get those photos. I've also seen some photographers even spruce those up, putting in gelled lights and flash and, you know, making them more creative. And that separates people again. It's that 10% that you're putting a lot of effort into to get something different, something unique that other people aren't gonna have. And that's what's gonna set you apart. Not just having an R3, but using the camera, showing people what you see. Because your shooting style and editing style is what's gonna, again, separate you in that 10%. I see the game very differently from how other people see the game. And it depends on the sport, right? Like I know baseball pretty well, just growing up playing it more than maybe another sports photographer. So I might notice different things on the field that they might not. But them not knowing the game might actually allow them to also get different photos. So you just always have to be searching for the non-obvious action photo. You definitely need to get those, but in between swings, in between at-bats, in between innings, you can look around the crowd, you can look for a new vantage point to shoot from, something unique, something interesting that doesn't matter what camera you have. You could have it on single shot and you're still gonna get a great photo. You know, sometimes that'll happen where you get sort of jaded. I've been at Fenway so often that it's like, okay, let me sit in my third base photo well, get the batter, get the pitcher, get the action that happens from there. But I, I do find that when I walk around the stadium or I move positions that I'm seeing something differently, I get a slightly different angle, I might find a better background and that I tend to get better photos when I'm moving around. Because you could have 10 people sitting next to you and they'll get the same shot as you. So, you know, moving around can help out. All right, now I'm sure you've probably seen the specs, but it's pretty fun to talk about. So 30 frames a second in electronic, that's crazy. I just, I don't know who needs to shoot 4K, 30 frames a second video, just video clips. That's all you're shooting. You're shooting video clips at 4K which is crazy, it's mind boggling. But I just, that seems like so many images. Like, yes, I would definitely use it at certain times, very important moments, things like that. But if they had some way to just sort of like tag the video clip or that you can delete an entire, you know, burst of photos at once, that's essentially the video clip that, oh, maybe something didn't happen, I don't want a picture from that, I can delete it. Just, you know, those 200 images I took in five seconds because that's, that's what's gonna happen is it, just cards are gonna fill up quick. You're gonna have 
to go through so many images. I mean, again, you're shooting 30 frames a second, so you're gonna be able to capture, you know, maybe that slightly better moment than you would shooting at 14 frames a second. They also have the stacked sensor that they're talking about that's gonna maybe get rid of or improve the rolling shutter that I've seen on the R5, which is one reason I don't use the electronic shutter. And if you watch my R5 video, I actually did end up buying an R5. I bought it more for portraits, but it is a great second body uh, for sports, is what I mainly use it for. But I do love it, it's amazing. Um, but I just still prefer a 1DX over the R5. All right, one that's crazy and I really want to try out is the eye control autofocus. So my understanding is that, right, there's tons of points on the back when I'm looking through, the viewfinder will know where my eye is pointed. So it'll choose the auto point focus that's closest to where I'm viewing. So theoretically, if I'm looking at a soccer player come down the field and I'm just following them with my eye, the autofocus point should change and stay on there rather than me trying to move the camera to keep them in frame or using the face detection or you know trying to move the actual thing myself with a, my thumb. So I know they've introduced this a while ago in another camera, didn't take hold, um, but I'm very curious. It's either gonna be amazing or something I would never use. <laughs> So it's gonna be interesting to see, you know, I'm probably gonna try to get a loan just to test it out and see what it's like. Um, but that's one that could actually be really cool. Uh, I mean, sometimes when I'm shooting though, I have like another eye open, so I'm not necessarily looking exactly at the person that I'm photographing. So it could, you know, move off of them. But, you know, we're just something you have to test out and we'll see how that goes. But could be awesome. And then it does include Wi-Fi and other bells and whistles, 4K video, you know, all that standard stuff you would expect in, you know, a really nice flagship body. So R3 looks amazing, probably not going to get it, but just reiterates how important it is to have your own style, shoot how you see the game, right, post those images that you personally really like, and find images that other people aren't finding because that's what's going to set you apart not having an amazing camera it's just going to be finding the nice light the nice backgrounds the emotion things that other people aren't looking for so hope that helps really curious to see what the r3 is like in person sometime in the future but probably not going to be too soon so hope you liked it any questions thoughts comments let me know. Happy to answer. See you next time.